Good morning, everyone. I'm Ariella Wagner, the founder of Sunray Construction Solutions. We help thousands of general contractors, subcontractors, suppliers with their construction notice to owner needs. Today, we have a really fantastic webinar on notice to owners, notices to owners, liens and bond claim refreshers with pro tips. So without further ado, I shall introduce the fabulous attorney, Alex Barthet. Thank you, Ariella. My name is Alex Barthet. I am a board certified construction attorney here in Florida. And today we're gonna to talk about notice to owners, liens and bond claims at a 101 level. But for those of you that know the rules, we'll give you some pro tips. So what are we gonna to cover today? We're gonna to start with why notice to owners, liens and bonds even exist. Why are they important? Then we'll break down uh, each one into each section. We'll talk about um, notice to owners, claims of lien and payment bond claims. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, why, why notice notices, liens and bonds? Why, why are we even talking about it? Why is it important? Well, understand that when the, that the law in Florida and in many states allows those that improve property to have a security interest in that property. And the exchange for getting the right to that security interest is to follow certain rules. So the rules that exist typically require you as a leanor to jump through some hoops and provide certain notices within certain amounts of time. And we're gonna talk about what those timeframes are. So the reason that this is important is that these documents put everyone else in the chain of construction on notice of your rights. And generally speaking, it's not always the case, and there are many exceptions to the rules that we're gonna talk about today, but the failure to timely serve these notices or to serve the wrong notice um, will invalidate your right to have a security interest in the property. And when I say a security interest, what I mean is if you work on a, on a project and you have lien rights and you exercise those lien rights, if there's any equity in the property, then you have the right to sell the property on the courthouse steps and any equity that exists in that property um, will be liquidated in the form of a sale and you will be paid. It doesn't always guarantee that you're paid in full. There may be no equity in the property that you lien, but it gives you a very strong right to take the property away from its owner. Um, the other reason these notices are important is that, that it lets everyone know that you're serious about getting paid. You know the rules, you know how it works, and you're gonna follow the rules to make sure that you get paid to secure um, the longevity of your company. As I said, it's required to secure your rights. If you have an obligation to send any of these notices and you don't, you will not have a right to the property or the bond claim. <clears throat> and interestingly, and probably, you know, barring the, the actual ultimate sale of the property at a foreclosure sale, these notices have an immediate effect on the project because those that understand the rules know that when they get a notice from you that they need to get a release from you every time they pay the contractor so your notice acts as a marker for them to say oh i'm going to pay the contractor well i got this notice from this sub or supplier i'm not paying you contractor until i get a release from them so your notice causes the owner to know that you exist on the property and require that you are paid in order for them to pay the contractor. And that check and balance is critical. And I would tell you that in my opinion, having done this now for 20 years, that the notice, the true value of the notice day to day is more about that um, check and balance about getting the owner to know that you're there and therefore require a release from you or the contractor to require a release from its sub because you sent a notice, that is a much more everyday um, power of the notice laws than the actual ultimate 
um, foreclosure of the property. Not that that's not important, but the way we really see it happen day to day is, is that. So with that as the background, um, I want to turn it back over to Ariella, who's going to talk about notice to owners and go through some of the key points for understanding notice to owners. Ariella? Great. Thank you, Alex. So what is a notice to owner? First and foremost, a notice to owner, if you do, if you do not have a direct contract, whether it's verbal or written, with the owner of the property in order, as he, as Alex stated before, in order to secure your lien or bond claim rights, you need to send a notice to owner. The time frame to send a notice to owner is 40 days from the first day you furnished labor and or material to the project. Now there is an exception to that rule and that's specially fabricated material. So when you're working on a, pro on a specific hypothetically glass that can only be constructed for a specific building, that would be considered specially fabricated. So the clock starts, starts ticking as soon as you start fabricating. So we're gonna get into the difference between private projects and public projects. Who needs to send it on a project, private project versus who needs to send it on a public project? So what are private projects? Those could be your obviously residential properties, commercial properties. Public projects, on the other hand, are owned by the city, the state, the county, and those projects cannot be leaned. Uh, there's no such thing at all in the state of Florida of leaning a, a public project. Think of it very logically. The purpose of a lien, which Alex is going to go into shortly, the purpose of the lien is to cloud the title of the property where you can foreclose on it and you can basically, possibly, um, end up owning a building. Now, we can't do that with public projects. So what is there to secure your payment? And that is the bond, okay? So who needs to send a notice to owner? And it's very interesting because that document is called a notice to owner forward slash notice to contractor. It's actually a combined form. And that's what notice to own, uh, that's what Sunray does for all of our customers. We make sure that your form is both for private projects and for public projects. Now who needs to send them for public projects? If you do not have a direct contract, again, verbal or written, with the general contractor who's carrying the bond, then you need to send a notice to owner. Now, best business practices is to always send uh, a notice to owner, even if you have a direct contract with the general contractor on bonded projects. When must it be sent? And when must these notice be notices be received? As I stated before, you have 40 days from the first day you're on the property to send a notice to owner. A notice to owner must be received by the 45th day from first furnishing. Best business practices, once again, you do not want to wait until the final hour to send your notices. As soon as you have the contract in place, verbal or written, you're going to send these notices at the beginning of the project. There, yes, a lot of companies use them as collection tools. They're not paid after 35 days, let me send them. Let's see if this expedites payment. It does not help you in some ways because you could forget to send your notices. I can't tell you how many scenarios I can give you with people who forget to send their notices. So make sure you send your notices at the beginning of the project and in your system, if you are a Sunray customer, take that work order number and implement that and say, okay, we noticed this, this is our work order number so for that project. So what is the first uh, work and how can I send it? How early can I send it? You could send your notices to owners as early as you wish. Um, you just can't send your notices, notices to owners late. Um, and your first day of work is when you're improving 
the project. So when you furnish the material to the project or when you are um, working, um, putting up the drywall, that is your first day on the job. Um, and this I think is the one of the, the pro tips here is determining a monetary threshold. A lot of people go, you know, Ariella, how do I know how much I should, when I should send like this notice? You know, it's only a $400 job. Well, how many times have we been on projects where the project starts off at say $500 and before you know it, it's a $7,000 project with change orders. So really best business practices is if it's $2,500 or more, you really want to make sure you're sending and securing your lien rights and sending your notices to owners. Um, so that is that with notices to owners in hopefully less than eight minutes. And uh, back to you, Alex. Perfect. Thank you, Ariella. So let's talk about claims of lien. <clears throat> what is a claim of lien? So step one is the notice that Ariella said. The claim of lien is the document that is recorded in the public record. It sets forth who you are, who the owner is, who hired you, when you did first work, when you did last work. And it is the document that clouds the title and becomes the encumbrance that you will ultimately, if you have to, use as the basis to foreclose and take ownership or sell the property. Um, it needs to be signed and notarized and recorded in the county where the project is located. So on a private project, who needs to record one? Um, so if you have a contract with the owner, you will record your claim of lien. Um, you don't need to send a notice to owner as Ariella said, because you have a direct contract with the owner. Um, but everybody else, subcontractors, sub subcontractors, suppliers, suppliers to sub subcontractors they need to record a notice to owner i'm sorry a claim of lien um, in in order to secure their right to be paid on the project as ariella mentioned on public projects there are no lien rights that is a bond claim we're going to talk about that next so sometimes i see folks uh, record claims of lien on public projects it's not that the clerk is gonna reject your lien. The clerk who receives these liens does not look at them, doesn't check dates, doesn't check owners and amounts. They just wanna make sure that it's signed and notarized and they will accept it. Um, so just because the clerk accepts the claim of lien for whatever you put on it doesn't mean that it's valid or enforceable. So if you try to lean a public project, the clerk will accept it, but it is uh, a meaningless document. It will have no effect legally. So when do you need to record your claim of lien? You need to record the claim of lien no later than 90 days from your last work uh, on the project. Um, 90 days is counted starting the day after your last day of work. So if today I show up and I um, finish all my work, day one is tomorrow. So I count all days, weekends and holidays, all the way through from day one to day 90. If day 90 falls on a weekend or legal holiday where the clerk is closed, it rolls to the next day. So if my 90th day was Saturday, it rolls to Sunday, and if Monday was a holiday, it would roll to Tuesday. So it's possible you could have 93 days to record your claim of lien. Um, let's talk about what isn't last work, because this is always a question that we get. Punch list work, warranty work, and passing inspections. Those items do not count as last work. Uh, by themselves. Now, you may be doing punch list as at the same time that you're doing real work. So that may actually be your last day of work. But if you finished your work today and a week from now you go back and you are the painter and you touch up um, certain areas of the building, then your last work is today. It's not a week from today when you went and did the punch list. 
if you are the plumber and you finish all your work today and a week from now the inspector comes and you pass your final inspection your last work isn't the day of the inspection uh, passing it's the day you did the work base contract work and approved change order work does constitute last work for your lien rights so uh, we had a client once who installed uh, doors and they missed their 90-day window to record a lien uh, and he was very frustrated so he uh, called me and he said can you believe it Alex they they called me and they want me to install another door which I have uh, which they haven't approved it's a thousand dollars and they want me to install it and they'll sign a change order I said you should absolutely do it put the the door in your truck and go and install it get the sign change order because that will revitalize your lien rights because now you've done an approved change order uh, and now your 90 days has been reset. So therefore you have the right to go back and um, lean the job, which is what he did. So he installed a thousand dollar door and he was able to put a lien on the property for about a hundred thousand dollars. And he was eventually paid because of that lien. Also remember that just because you expect to go back, if you actually never go back to do work, your 90 days may expire. So for example, if you do work and maybe the job gets shut down or you are demobilized from the job and you think, well, we're going to go back in two months. I don't need to lean it now. If something goes wrong and you actually never go back, then you will lose your lien rights because the court is not going to care that you don't have um, uh, the ability to go back. If you didn't go back, you didn't reset your 90 days. We saw the lot, that a lot with the coronavirus. Jobs stopped and then the 90 days expired and some, some of those jobs didn't start again. And clients called us and said, well, can't I get an exception because of the coronavirus? And the answer is no. Um, if the job didn't restart, you needed to have recorded your lien within 90 days of your last work. And if the last work you did was at the shutdown because of the coronavirus, well, that's, what, that's the date that matters. Um, Let's go back to that pro tip. Don't wait to the last few days to record your lien. Just like Ariella said, don't wait to the last minute to send your notice. Don't wait to the last few days to record your claim of lien. It takes time to prepare the lien and to record it. Uh, typically, we're seeing recording dates uh, in more populous counties, Dade County, for example. Sometimes that wait time to record electronically because they're still not letting you in in person can be five days. So everything's ready, you submit it to the clerk to record electronically, and it could take five days before the clerk accepts it. And that by itself is not a reason to um, say, well, I did everything I could, my lien should still be good. There's no case to support that. So you need to make sure that you start, in my opinion, at about day 60. So at about day 60 from your last work on the job, you need to make sure that you are starting the process to record a lien um, so that you're not waiting till day 85, 86, 87. Let's talk about payment bond claims. Um, and these are the types of claims that you can assert when you, have, when you work on a public project. So what is a notice of non-payment? A notice of non-payment is, let's call it the cousin to the claim of lien. When you're owed money on a public job, or a private bonded job, and that contractor uh, hasn't paid you, or if you're a sub or supplier, you haven't been paid, you need to serve a notice of non-payment. It is still a notarized document. It has slightly less information than a claim of lien, and it needs to be um, prepared and recorded, sorry, prepared and notarized, not recorded, just sent to the uh, interested parties on the project. So that would be the uh, surety and the contractor. So on private projects, who needs to send it? Well, not every private project is bonded, but if it is, then you need to send this notice of non-payment if you uh, do not have a contract with the bonded contractor. So for example, if the contractor has a bond on this private job, and I am the plumber with a direct contract with the, the contractor, 
um, I don't need to send my first notice, which is that notice to contractor Ariella mentioned, um, but I still need to send it on this uh, private job. Uh, so within 90 days of last work, I need to send this notice of non-payment. The same is true for, for public projects. Um, the key is, uh, and I, I would suggest to you, just like it's best practice to serve your notice to owner, uh, whether you need to or not, you should be re uh, recording your lien and um, serving your notice of non-payment, no matter what, within the 90 days of your last work on the job. So as I said, it needs to be received by the contractor and the bond company, the surety, no later than 90 days. The 90 days is counted the same as the claim of lien. So if my last day is today, tomorrow is day one, I count every day in between, weekends and holidays. When I get to the 90th day, if the 90th day is a, a weekend or legal holiday, it rolls to the next business day. It's not recorded, so it's just sent. Uh, certified mail is fine. We typically send it via overnight mail when we're within the last seven days of the deadline to make sure that something doesn't go wrong with the certified mail. Um, so you can send it via FedEx, um, priority mail, um, or certified mail. The test for last work is the same as the claim of lien. So punch list work, warranty work, uh, getting an inspection passed, that doesn't count as last work. It has to be substantive work, base contractor change, or approved change order work. That is gonna be your last day of work under the lien and bond statute. So here's a, a little tip. Um, I don't think you should use it all the time, but it's good to know in case maybe there was a slip up that you still have rights. If you are in privity with the bonded public contractor, you don't need to serve a notice of non-payment. So for example, if I'm the plumber on a, a uh, school board project and my contract is with the bonded contractor, I do not need to send um, a notice of non-payment in order to have rights on that bond. I strongly encourage you to still do it. You should just have a practice in your office that at any time you're owed money, at day 60, you start the process of either, either recording a lien or serving a notice of non-payment. But in, in the rare situation where it fell through the cracks, know that this is an, one of the many exceptions that exist in the lien law. Um, also know that not every public project is bonded. There are certain thresholds that have to exist. So just because you're doing work on a public project, don't assume that the job is bonded. For example, the, the law in Florida is that any job between the public entity and the contractor, if it's less than $200,000, it does not need to be bonded. If it's between 200 and 400, it's at the discretion of the municipality whether or not they want it bonded or not. And if it's over 400,000, then it has to be bonded. So is it possible that you could be on a small public job thinking that it's bonded and in fact there is no bond? Absolutely. So be very careful um, and check that out before you start your work. Let's go ahead and put it all together. So from beginning to end, I can give you all the timeframes in one slide so you have them all. So within 45 days of your first work, no later than 45 days from your first work, and as, as we said, it should be sooner, you need to serve that notice to owner or notice to contractor. Within 90 days of your last work on the job, you need to record a lien or serve your notice of non-payment. Again, 90 days being the absolute last day for it to either be recorded for the lien or received by the contractor and surety uh, for the notice of non-payment. Within 15 days of recording the lien, a copy of it needs to be served on all interested parties. When you use Sunray, they take care of all of these mailings for you. Um, so they, they get done automatically, but this is another obligation that if you do it yourself, not only do you have to record the lien, you need to send a copy within 15 days to everyone on the project. Um, that's listed in the notice of commencement. If you have a direct contract with the owner, there's another document you need to uh, prepare and notarize and serve on the owner at least five days before you file your lawsuit to foreclose on the lien. And that's called a contractor's final affidavit. Again, this is only if you have a direct contract with the owner 
and you have a lien on the project. Uh, and then finally, you need to file a lawsuit to foreclose on your lien within one year from the recording date of the claim of lien. There's a last trick there. We'll get to that in a minute. And if you have a claim on a payment bond, you need to file your lawsuit against the uh, surety no later than one year from your last date of work. So notice that a lien foreclosure case has a slightly different deadline one year from the recording date of the claim of lien versus a bond claim, which is one year from your last date of work. And those, those little asterisks means that these dates can be shortened. Um, so there are ways for the owner, the contractor, the surety to shorten the time that you have to sue. Um, sometimes it can reduce it down to 60 days. Sometimes they can reduce it down to 20 days. You will get notice of those documents if they are in effect, but just know that it's not always one year. It can be shortened sometimes. Ariella, thank you very much. Thank you very much, and I wish everyone a wonderful and safe day. Bye-bye.